going to bring the message this morning, so give him a round of applause and make him feel more than welcome. Excuse me, man. Yeah, I'm gonna come over here. Come over here, man. Oh, you can come over here. Good Sunday morning. Amen. Before we get started, I'm gonna ask everybody to stand up and give somebody a hug. Ooh, I did that all day long. Here, Miss Sandy, I'll give you a hug. If you can stand up, if you can't. So give somebody a hug anyway. That's right, boys. Give you somebody a hug. Today's a good day, everybody. I'll give you a hug. Rose has been right. doing such a good job at Sunday school. And your wife is doing the thing. Okay. Right? Okay, y'all. Awesome. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Boy, when you start hugging, you can't stop, can you? No. It's contagious, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. So it is good, ain't it? Showing the love of Jesus. Amen. That's what we do as Christians. We show the love of Jesus. How are you doing? Okay, okay. Y'all ready? Everybody ready for me to start? Hold on. Hold your questions. Please hold your questions. Because I have something to tell you today that's very important. I want everybody to hear. Yeah. Now, when Major Mike asked me to speak, it's such an honor to speak in front of a, a group of Christians. So I want to say thank you, Major Mike, for having faith in me. I don't know when you're going to let me speak again, so I got to get it in today. Okay? Excuse me, Sammy. No, Sammy's about to deliver a message, and we need to treat him with the same respect we treat Major. Thank you. Right. Thank Amen. You, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to start. Now, Major Mike. I asked him what should I speak about today. He gave me a few suggestions. But you know, I don't know a lot of things. I'm not the smartest man in the world, but one thing I do know is I know Jesus. Amen. Come on. And so today I'm going to speak about Jesus, if that's all right with y'all. Y'all mind if I speak about Jesus today? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to speak about Jesus. Sandy's going to give me a hand with this. We're going to start right in Proverbs <laughs> chapter 19, verse 14. If you got a Bible, follow with me. If you don't, that's okay. Just try to keep up. What I'm going to start talking about today is prosperity. Yes. How we all try to have things in life. Yes. And when I came to Sunday school today, I said, this man, he was dressed better than me. I said, you speaking too? Because he's he dressed better than me. But Major Mike says, come as you are. Amen. And I got out of prison nine months ago, and I bought all church clothes before I bought regular clothes. Yes. So I got more clothes to wear to church than I do to wear anywhere else. Right. So I try to come as I am, and everybody looks nice today. It's definitely good to see you. Amen. Let's talk about some prosperity that comes through grace in the word of Jesus, which is the Son of God. Yes. Come on, Sam. Yes. This is Proverbs 19.4, right? Chapter 19, verse 4. Wealth <coughs> makes many friends. Wealth makes many friends. But when you got money, you got a lot of friends. If you get a check on the first of the month, your house is full of people. When you got a full tank of gas, everybody want to ride. And when you go into McDonald's, all of a sudden everybody's hungry and want to go with you to get something to eat. Right. So we know when you got money, you have a lot of friends. You have a lot of people that want to be around you when your pocket is right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Christmas time, people you ain't seen in a long time will pop up at your door. Am I right, Frank? They'll just show up talking about, don't forget about me, it's Christmas time. Right. Come on, Sandy, read down a little bit further. Yeah. But the poor man is avoided by his neighbor. So when you don't have no money, Where's all your friends at then? Yeah. When you don't have a car, where's all these people at then? When you need some help, when you need some food, when you need to get a hot meal and you're on your way to the soup kitchen, how many people will come with you to the soup kitchen? Not a lot of people because their pride is too high. So I'm telling you right now, money is a gift from God, but your mind has to be right to get that money. Amen. If you think that you just want to be uh, in the spirit, you want to be blessed, then you have to remember that Jesus was a rich man too. How many believe Jesus was rich? Come on, Sandy, come on. Come on, come on, just come on with the next scripture. I want y'all to know what the Bible say. He that believeth on this Bible as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it ain't about what I say. It ain't the messenger. Rose did a good job in Sunday school. It's not the messenger. It's the message. And the message got to come from the Bible. If it don't come from this Bible, then the good message get away from it. Come on, Sandy, give me that next scripture. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. For you are becoming progressively acquainted with and recognizing you are becoming a, a aggressively acquainted with Jesus Christ. The more you come to church, the more you read your Bible, yeah. the more prayer you do, you are becoming aggressive in the word of God. You have to be aggressive. You can't be passive and be a Christian. 
You can't sit at home and not pray and say you're a Christian. You got to come to church if you're a Christian. Right. A good Christian don't sit at home and say I can watch church on TV. Because church is on TV seven days a week. I know because I watch Channel 49. But when it comes Sunday morning, be aggressive. Come with your Bible in your hand. I see your Bible back there. Hold it up. Come with your Bible in your hand. They call me a Bible thumper. I take it everywhere I go. That's what you have to do. Come on, Sandy. Read down a little first. And recognizing more strongly and clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. His kindness. His, his kindness. Graciously generosity. Yes. His undeserved favor. Yes. And spiritual blessing. Blessings. In and through. Through. He was so very rich. Well, stop right there. With all that Jesus did for us, do you know he was a rich man? Yes. Jesus came from a family who had wealth. If you check the Bible and check his bloodline, you will see that Jesus came from a wealthy family. He was born with it. See, some of us weren't born with it. We got to get out here and get in the dirt and try to get it. We got to go work 40 hours a week and get it. Some of us got to work for 2 or $3 an hour. I did it if I could shovel your snow. When it's snow, people complain, oh, it's snowing. Give me a shovel. I go, I'll come back with 10 or $15. I have to get down and get dirty to get some money. That's because it. guess what? It costs money to live, don't it? That's but what did Jesus do? He was a rich man. Come on, Sandy, what did he do? Yet for your sake. For your sakes. He became. He became. So very poor. So very poor. In order. He gave it up. Stop right there. Let me stop you right there. He gave up being rich. He left home with the clothes on his back. Some of y'all right now got on shoes that cost $50, $60. If they cost $20, think about this. Jesus didn't have no shoes on his feet. He gave up everything to get out here for your sake and my sake. He left the money alone. Yes. He gave up the richness of the physical so he could come out here and get us spiritually rich. Do y'all understand that? See, when you come in here and you're a Christian, you have to understand something. I might not have a lot of money, but I'm spiritually rich. When I woke up this morning, I thank Jesus as soon as I got out of my bed. When my feet hit the floor, I thank Jesus. Yes. He gave up his life for me. Yes. See, some of you don't even understand right now what it is to give your life up for somebody else. Yes. If you got children, guess what? You didn't gave your life up for your children. You were children, y'all understand me, right? Yes. I got children. You didn't gave your life up for your children when you got to get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning because they crying. And you won't rest until they rest, am I right? That's how Jesus wanted us to see him as a father. Yeah. That is my God. See, Jesus is my God. I'm not scared to tell you. Yeah. I love Jesus. Yeah. And when you love Jesus with all your heart, there's nothing you can't do. That's it. You, you will become spiritually rich. Matter of fact, people who got money and their spirit ain't right, guess what? They commit suicide. They're going crazy. They're becoming addicted on drugs and alcohol. Some of the rich people is getting caught drunk driving. You got all that money, you get paid millions of dollars to be in the NBA, but you want to get high on drugs. Lamar Odom is in the hospital and he's recovering. Let's pray for him, he's getting better. But why is you getting high and you got all that money? Because yeah. money is not the key to happiness. That's right. Matter of fact, money is not evil. Money. It's not evil. It's good, but it's the root. That's right. Do you understand me? If you got money and your mind ain't right, if your love is not right for Jesus and you got money, you cannot keep that money. It's like holding a popsicle in your hand. You ever tried that? In a mill. So you gotta have the love of Jesus in you to have the money so you will know how to use it. Cause it's good when you use it the right way. Am I right? Come on, Sandy. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Now we're gonna get into when you get money and you're getting yourself right with God and your life is coming together. Let's talk about the people that you involve in your life. In order that by his poverty, you might become enriched abundantly and supplied. Okay, now let's go down to Proverbs. Chapter 18, verse 22. Y'all still with me? Can I testify today? I just need three people to testify with me. I just need three people to testify that Jesus is good. That's all I need. Jesus is good. I don't need a lot. Come on. Jesus is good. If you can testify with me, don't be scared of that. Guess what? Jesus went out and died for you and me. And he said, if you pick your Bible up and you say, whatever you do, you say in my name, they'll persecute you. But blessed are the ones who are persecuted. Blessed are the poor, right? Blessed are the meek. Don't ever be scared, Rose. You teach it every Sunday in Sunday school. Get out there and carry that message. Jesus is good, and yeah. through him comes life. Because you cannot get to God unless you go through Jesus. That's right. See, anybody, I don't care what religion you're in. I don't knock them. If you don't got one, find one. But I believe, like Major Mike believed, if you want to get to God, you, Jesus is the truth, the light, and the way. Right. And you cannot get to the Father unless That's you go right. through him. Come on, Sam. 
Proverbs 18, 22. All right, Proverbs. I want y'all to hear this. We're talking about the people you allow in your life. Come on. He who finds a true wife. He who finds a true wife. Now, I'm going to put husband in there, too. I want y'all to hear this. I'm going to put boyfriend in there, too. I'm going to put girlfriend in there. I'm going to put best friend in there. Because some of y'all, just like me, we have problems when we're in relationships, right? And when you have a friend, sometimes that friend will cause you more problems than you can cause yourself. Come on. You say he who finds a good wife, a good husband, a good friend, a good neighbor, someone you can trust, a concubine, someone that you can be passionate with. That's what we're talking about now, right? Come on, Sandy. Finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. You find a good thing. Yes. And you yes. obtain favor from the Lord. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, if you got somebody in your life and they're not right, and they're causing you hell and confusion, get them out your life. That's right. See, life is beautiful. It's the people that you allow in your life that messes your life up. You have to realize what God is trying to tell you. If you have a husband or a wife and she's not doing right by God, get them out your life. If you have a friend who refuses, you understand me, to give you peace of mind in your life and let you praise Jesus how you see fit, get them out your life. If you want to move forward in your life, you have to make sure you have the right people in your life. Because if you got money and you're not careful, the wrong people you allow in your life will have you struggle out on drugs. I know. I was there. I did that. They'll have you breaking the law. They'll make you lose your family. You can't even find your way to church when you're high on drugs. I don't care how much money you got in your pocket. You think because you got $500 you can make it to church? Get high and watch what them drugs tell you. You can't go today. That's what them drugs will tell you. That's the devil's work. You have to have your mind right when you're talking about being with Jesus. Come on, Sandy. Let's go to the next chapter. I know I don't have much time. Major Mike already looking like me like, you, you got to come on now, Sam. Let's go down here to the next one. We talking about, now listen. Rose talk about this every Sunday in Sunday school. How do we look as Christians? How do we talk as Christians? How we walk as Christians? How people view you as a Christian? But do you know, I'm going to tell you all something. When I was on drugs, I smelled a certain way. When I smoked weed, I smelled a certain way. I didn't have to say nothing to you if I came around you if I was smoking weed. You knew I was smoking weed. By the way I acted, you knew I was hot. If I was drunk, you knew I was drunk and you could smell it on me. But do you know now, I still have a smell? I still have a smell. I'm a Christian. That's right. Do you know a Christian has a smell? Yeah. Come on, Sandy, read this chapter for me. I want y'all to know, I don't care what you wear. I don't care how you dress. As a Christian, you have a smell, and people can smell you a mile. Yeah, right. Come, on. Come on, read this for me, Sandy. This is what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 14 and 15. Come on. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who in Christ, in always, Christ always leads us in triumph. Always leads us in triumph. This as now. trophies of Christ's victory. Yes. And through us spreads, yes. spreads and makes evident the evident. fragrance of the fragrance. knowledge. Fragrance of what? Of the knowledge of God everywhere. Fragrance? Yes. yes. Fragrance and you smell. Yes. See, when you're a Christian and you carry yourself like a Christian, you ain't even got to open your mouth. You ain't got to run out here and tell everybody you're a Christian. They say they can tell by the way you move. They can tell by the way you walk. When they see you on Sunday morning and you going somewhere every Sunday at the same time you leaving, they say that person going to church. You start to smell a certain way. People say, oh man, if the devil is in you, I got to get away from Major Mike. I can't be around him because he smells too good. People will tell you I refuse to come into church. Why you don't want to come into church? Because everybody in here smells good. Everybody in here smells like Jesus Christ. And if you got the devil in you, you can't stand that smell. Do you hear me? That smell repulses you. If you got some kind of conviction on you when you know you're not doing right by Jesus, every time you come across a Christian like me or a Christian like you or you, you say, I got to get away from you. Why is that? That smell is so powerful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And when you praise Jesus, when you do what Jesus wants you to smell, is his praise. Yeah. It's what he's looking for. He can look at you all day. You can talk the talk. But if you're not walking that walk, you don't have that scent. Right. You know what that is? That's like picking a flower. You see a rose, and that rose looks beautiful. So you go pick that rose, and you smell it, and it has no scent. You say, what happened to that rose? It looks good. It looks like the rest of them, but it don't smell the same. Why? Because you got to have the word of God in your heart. Yes. The word of God has to be in your heart, in your spirit. Now, sometimes we get sick, right? We talk about this all the time. My legs hurt, right? I got diabetes. I have seizures. My back hurt. My wrist hurt. My neck hurt, right? Am I right? Yep. Okay, come on. We're going to talk about Proverbs chapter 18, 14. I want to know, I want you to know when you praise Jesus, you're going to get sick. You a man, you a woman, you a child. You live in the physical sickness is going to come upon you. Do we cry about this sickness? 
Do we complain about it? Oh, oh my leg. Oh, my toe. My toenail. You ever had a hangnail? I had a hangnail. They hurt, don't they? Oh, I can't do nothing. This hangnail, right? So you're going to have some ailments in your life when you're doing Jesus' work and you're trying to praise Jesus. Be prepared for that. But don't cry over it. Come on, Sandy. What the Bible say? We are Proverbs chapter 18, right. verse 14. Stay with me now. I see you raise your hands to praise Jesus. I love that man right there. He's been with us a long time. It's good to see you in church. Come on. Chapter 18, verse 14. Listen now. The strong spirit of a man. The strong spirit of a man. Sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. See, so if you got pain and you hurt and you in a wheelchair, guess what? You can make it through. Yes. Praise Jesus. If your spirit is right, you can get through any situation. That's right. That's it. There's nothing that can tell you apart. Get to church if you got to crawl up in here. Right. Come on in here if you got to crawl. You crawl right up into the altar. That's right. You ain't got to get off your knees. Crawl in here, crawl up to the altar, stop praying. Because God will give you the strength to make it through. That's right. Sometimes he brought me through when I had no way to get through. I look back and say, I don't even know how I made it through that. But Jesus brought me through. Yeah. Just because you catch a cold and you get sick or you a diabetic, don't, don't let that stop you. Yeah. It's the reason why you have that on you, so you can push harder to get to church. So you can push harder to love people. It ain't that. If you don't have no ailments, guess what? You did already. If you ain't never had a cold, you ain't never been sick, you ain't never had a stomach ache, you ain't never threw up, you did. Because every one of us that's alive has got sick, gonna get sick, and gonna stay getting sick to the day we pass for. Am I right? Y'all right. feel me? So don't let them sicknesses get you down. Don't worry about that. The spirit. That's right. That's what it is. Because you got some people that's big and strong. They lift weights and run 10, 20 miles a day. And their spirit ain't right. So when the sickness hit them, they die for the count. They cry, they complain. They can't even thank God. Guess what I say when I'm sick? Thank you that I can still feel the sickness. Because yes. if I stop feeling the sickness, I know I'm dead. Y'all hear me? Yes. Come on, we're going to go on down, Major Mike. I'm almost done here. Yeah. Now, should you as a Christian, right, be afraid? You be, should you be afraid of getting sick? No. Should you be afraid of what people say about you? No. Come on, Rose. You know what I'm talking about? We talked about this in Sunday school. Yeah. Should you be afraid when they come at you and say, he ain't no good, he a Christian? Should you be afraid when they say, I ain't going to church, he going to church, I ain't going? Should you be afraid when they say, they got certain religions out there and I ain't going to say which one it is, but they hate us Christians. They want to see us dead. They want to kill us. Off with our hands. That's what they say. Just because we believe in Jesus. They want to do something to us. Do y'all understand that? Should we be afraid? No. Come on, Sandy. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what this Bible says. Not what Sammy says. Not what Major Mike says. Let's see what this Bible says. Where, where, am I, where am I at? Psalms 56, verse 3 and 4. Follow me now. Y'all got a Bible? Follow me. Some of y'all don't need a Bible because you got these verses in your head. I know. What? I ain't got them yet, so I still need a Bible. Okay. You ready? Come on. Psalms uh, chapter 56, verse 3 and 4. What time I am afraid. What time I am afraid. Anytime I am afraid. Anytime I feel like I'm scared. Anytime I feel like the rent is due, I can't pay. Anytime I feel like they finna cut my electricity off. Anytime I feel like I can't make it to church. Anytime I feel like that they have to kill me because I'm a Christian. Anytime I feel like that I just can't do it. That I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I get afraid. Anytime that happens to me. Anytime that happens to you. Come on, Sandy. I will have confidence in I will have confidence. And put my trust and reliance in you. Put my trust and reliance in Jesus Christ. Do you all understand it? Anytime you're scared. You don't have to depend on Sammy to come save you. You don't have to depend on the police to come save you. Anytime you get scared, put your trust in Jesus Christ. You have to. Come on, Sandy, finish that off for me. By the help of God. By the power of what? By the help of God. By the help of God. Amen. I will praise his word. I will what? Praise his word. Praise his word. Come on. On God I lean. Come on. Rely and confidently put my trust. Put my trust. I will not fear. I will not fear. What man? What man? Who is flesh? Come on. Do to me. I don't care what you do to me. <laughs> I love Jesus that much. You gotta be the same way as I am. Yeah. This is how you do it. I don't care what you say you're gonna do to me. I don't care what it is. Jesus is my rock, my sword, and my shield. You understand me? He got me through darkness. Yeah. At night when I'm sleep, he got you. Yeah. When you sleep, 
and you dreamed it, Jesus got you. You hear me, Lord, aren't you? Yeah. When you up and you wake up in the morning, he got you because you woke up. The blood still running warm in your veins. You still with your up. You know your name. Jesus got you. Right. You didn't have to do nothing. Open your eyes. Yeah. As soon as you open your eyes, no. But you say, Christ, Jesus got me. Amen. You can't do nothing to me. I'm a Christian. I'm in church. I'm not only in my church. Guess what else I do? Come on, Sandy. Let's finish this thing off now. We ain't got nothing but a little bit more time. Yeah. We're going to go down here to Acts. Yeah. We're going to go to Acts. Chapter 2. 42. Verse 42. Now we know Jesus got us. What do we do? Yeah. I love that, Rose. Yeah. What do we do? I'm talking about now what Rose said. Yeah. Now what Sammy said. Yeah. What this Bible said. Yeah. Sure. What the Bible said we're supposed to do as Christians. Yeah. Come on. Acts chapter 2. Hold your questions. Yeah. Acts chapter 2. Verse 30, 42. I don't have a lot of time to finish up for you, Major. Come on, what should we do as Christians? Read for me, Sam. And they steadfastly persevered. Steadfast me, never quit. Persevere. Persevere me no matter how hard it gets. No matter how bad it gets. Persevere. Stand strong. If you can't do nothing, stand in the word of Jesus Christ. If you can't do nothing else, stay firm in his word. Come on. Come on. Devoting themselves. Devote yourself, meaning there's no doubt about it. I'm a Christian. That's you it. can't trick me up. You can't come to me and tell me, well, if you come over here, we do this. Well, you can do what you want to do all day. I'm a Christian. Matter of fact, I'm going to quit listening to you if you ain't talking about what I'm talking about. So what else are we talking about, Sandy? Come on. Constantly to the instruction. The instructions. Come on. And fellowship of the Fellowship. Now, how long we talk instruction? We talk about the doctrine. To the why do you think Major Mike said, come on with the first doctrine? Mm -hmm. When you talk about the instruction of being a Christian, you talk about to indoctrinate the doctrine of this church, the Salvation Army. Yeah. And salvation means yeah. to save. That's right. So you talk about how can I be saved? Through this doctrine. That's what we talk about. Not only doctrine, not only instruction, but what else, Sandy? To the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread. Do you understand we have a soup kitchen in our church? Yes. Jesus, everywhere he went, he ate. He broke bread with people. We must do the same thing. The soup kitchen ain't just about coming here eating, even though we know we need a hot meal sometimes. Sometimes you have to sit there and talk to people. Everybody that goes to the soup kitchen, they don't come to church. This is your chance as Christians to sit down and have a meal with a person and say, listen, what you're doing after you eat? Come to church Sunday. That's it. You got your physical food. Now it's time to come get some spiritual food. That's because it. up in the Salvation Army, we got the truth. That's the it. blood of Jesus is all over this bill. I know you can feel it as soon as you walk in the door. The blood of Jesus is here. Come on, Sandy, let's finish this thing off. Including the Lord's Supper and prayers. The Lord's Supper and prayers. What you say, Rose? Pray. <laughs> That's what we do with Christmas. Paul say, put this in your prayer, on your prayer list. You got a list? Get you a prayer list. Pray every day. Pray all the time. Pray. Pray. Pick your Bible up. Come to church. Listen. Then when you get a little piece of money, put some in that basket. Yes. Put it in the basket. Do the right thing with it. Put some in that basket. When I was on drugs and I got money, I didn't know what to do with it, so I went and gave it to somebody else. Now I got my mind right. I smell good. Look at me now. Talk to me. I came home from prison nine months ago. I got a four-bedroom house. Sitting on five acres of land. On, I'm man. doing my internship here with Major Mike. I ain't missed church one day. Major Mike can attest to that. I keep my Bible over. Matter of fact, I got five Bibles all over my house. When you come in, you're going to smell it. You're going to see them Bibles. I ain't talking about with your eyes. You're going to smell it with your nose. You're going to say, oh, Lord, I'm in the house of God. Yeah. That's how your house got to be. Yeah. Your house got to be like that. Keep the devil out your house. When you pray, he running. That's right. When you open your Bible up, he running. That's right. When you say, I got to go to church, he getting away from Believe me when I tell you that, as Christians, we have a job to do. And never be scared of nobody. Hold your head up high. Be proud to say who you is. I am a Christian. I love Jesus. And guess what? You cannot move my spirit. Yeah. Even if I can't walk. I crawl here if I have to. Because yeah. I love being a Christian. That's and I love Jesus. Y'all hear me? Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. Okay. Thank you, Major Mike, for giving me the time. I hope somebody got a good Amen. word. May God add a blessing to the hearing of his word. And I hope you all have a safe week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And one of the things, again, I hope you take with you, he's absolutely right. When we come Christians, yes, putting Jesus boy, first in our heart, put Jesus first, things will start to change. Things will start to move in your life. Or we can do this lip service, but we'll know if it's really true.
Jesus is alive. Listen to this song. I had him in the middle of the bulletin when we did choir practice Thursday. I said, you know what? Don't be offended. I'm going to put you towards the end. Because listen to the words. If the song and the message doesn't convict you, uh-oh. Come on now. The Holy Spirit. Listen to the words of this song. to that mercy seat, the holiness table, until you come and say, Jesus, have all of me, guess what? You're still leaving those same troubles. That's right. That's right. But when you lay them down and allow Jesus to move within, like Sammy was telling us, again, we'll be smelling, we'll be whole, we'll be right with the Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what you got to lay it down. Got to lay it down. Don't leave today, this Sunday, thinking, ah, oh, man, I, I got it all made. Because guess what? All it takes is one of you to go out in my parking lot, slip, fall, smack your head, and you could be in the hospital for two months as my social worker was in the hole. But you know, every time I visit her, 
And when she talked, she'd dribble when she talked because she had a head injury. Yeah. But she knew the Lord. She knew the Lord. And God called her home two months later after that. Don't miss out on any opportunity That's right. That's to right. know the Lord. That's right. Put Jesus in your heart. We can't predict. We don't know. But we do know that if our life is right with the Lord, He says, Welcome home, thou faithful servant. Welcome home. Jesus died on the cross. On the cross. God bless you. We'll see y'all come back next Sunday. And again for another powerful sermon, and song, and music. But most of all, the worship, instruction, fellowship, and evangelizing others into our kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today. And we come together because Lord, Bay City is God of what it takes. Lord, we know what we ought to be doing and we're doing it. And Lord, help us and encourage us, Lord, to continue to preach your word, to continue to have fellowship with you. Bless each and every one of us, for we ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.